Hello. Uh, the anatomy of the genitofemoral nerve. Genitofemoral. Sounds like it's sensibly named. Sounds like we can work out what it does from its name. This is again another one of those nerves that seems a little bit of obscure anatomy, but in fact is very important anatomy. This is a nerve that gets injured. So it's important to the surgeon that's trying to fix it, the physician that's trying to work out what the pain is being caused by. It's important to the person that is feeling that pain. This is our anatomy. Um, it's, a, it's a nerve of the, the, it comes from the lumbar plexus, the low back, runs to the genital and femoral, the upper thigh regions, and along its pathway, it is subject to injury. So a lower back injury could damage this nerve. Uh, an incision to the anterior abdominal wall could, could damage this nerve. And it's largely sensory. It does have a motor job, so the results of damage to that nerve will be pain. So we'll look at the anatomy of the nerve. We'll see exactly where it comes from, how it runs around the body to get to its target structures, what those target structures are. Um, and then we'll chuck a few clinical doodads in the end, all right? Um, this is the lumbar part of the vertebral column and from here we find spinal nerves passing out from in, in between the vertebrae. These are the lumbar spinal nerves. So this is the L5, L4, L3, L2, L1 vertebral bodies. So then the nerve inferiorly, this will be L1, L2, L3, well, L3 back there, L4, L5 in there. Those are the spinal nerves. And the genitofemoral nerve is derived from the ventral rami of L1 and L2. That's quite a long way from the target structures. So the lumbar plexus is a plexus of nerves, it's a bundle of wiring, it's an organization of, of neurons, of neuronal axons, and from L1 and L2, a whole load of neurons come together to form the genitofemoral nerve. Now, obviously, this is very deep. This is covered in muscle. Let's have a look at that. Here we go then. Um, so you can just see one of those lumbar vertebrae here. That'll be L5, which means that the lumbar plexus and the lumbar vertebrae are deep to all of this stuff. Here's the kidneys, major blood vessels, and so on. Now this muscle here is psoas major. And the genitofemoral nerve will pass from the lumbar plexus into psoas major, through psoas major. It's even described as forming within psoas major. And it'll appear um, on the anterior surface of psoas major, deep to the psoas fascia and then it will descend and run laterally. Now, it's gonna run to the inguinal ligament. So the inguinal ligament is here. The inguinal ligament is kind of where the anterolateral muscles of the abdominal wall end and the thigh begins. So it will run towards the inguinal ligament, deep to the ureter, deep to the gonadal vessels and out around here. And before it gets to the inguinal ligament, it will bifurcate. It will split into two branches. Can you guess what those branches are called? There's a genital branch and there's a femoral branch. Sometimes names are hard, not in this case. Now the femoral branch is going to run to the upper thigh, the genital branch is going to run to the genitals. In the male that means it's going to run to the scrotum, in the female that means it's going to run towards the labia majora. Now, where the genitofemoral nerve splits is actually highly variable. It might be near the inguinal ligament, which is what I think happens in most or maybe 50% of people. But if you really look, um, sometimes it splits right where it starts and sometimes it splits at all sorts of different points along that route. Now, the um, <laughs> Let's take the femoral branch first, which also gets called the lumboinguinal nerve. Old terms. But the femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve then will run lateral to this blood vessel. This is the external iliac artery at this point. And it will run deep to the inguinal ligament to appear down here. Now we've talked about the, um, the femoral sheath in the past. It will pierce the femoral sheath 
down here, you can see this white fascia. This is the fascia lata. It will also pass the, pierce the fascia lata. All that is saying is that whilst the genitofemoral nerve is retroperitoneal, it's, it's deep to all the fascia here, it will make its way superficially towards the skin and then will be sensory from the skin of the proximal anterior thigh and a little bit of medial thigh as well in most cases. And for the observant among you, you may have noticed that that is the skin superficial to the femoral triangle. All right, so the, um, the genital branch then is a little bit more interesting. The genital branch will cross the external iliac artery and it will run to the inguinal canal. So the inguinal canal is the way in which structures, for example, the most, the most prominent example is in, in the male. The male structures in the scrotum will connect to the abdomen and the pelvis by running through the inguinal canal. So it is a canal through the anterior abdominal wall, through the muscles there. We've talked about this elsewhere. Um, so we have the spermatic cord running through there in men, and we have the round ligament running through there in women. So the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve will pass into the deep inguinal ring, will run through the inguinal canal, pass out through the superficial inguinal ring, and then at that point, in the male, it would be entering the scrotum, and in the female, it would be passing into the labia majora. We don't have either of those here. This is a... And there's no external genitalia on here, but that's what this is signifying here. In this case, this would be, this would be male, so this would be the spermatic cord. So the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve will run through the inguinal canal and into the scrotum or the labia majora. So that means that the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve in men will carry sensory innervation back from the skin of the scrotum. Um, it will carry motor fibers to the cremaster muscle, which is an involuntary muscle which can contract and pull the testes closer to the body, so it, it helps manage the temperature of the testes. Um, and it will also innovate uh, the dartos muscle, which is like a fascia next to the skin, which is controls like the wrinkling of the skin, also involved in thermoregulation. So the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve will carry autonomic nerve fibers to those involuntary muscles. The genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve also gets called the external spermatic nerve, probably a name you'll never come across, but there you go. In the female pelvis then, it will carry sensory fibers back from the mons pubis here, the skin anterior to the, the pubis bone, and also from the skin of the labia majora. So it has sensory roles down here as well. That's the genital part of the genitofemoral nerves, sensory bits. Okay, so there's quite a bit you can work out just by looking at the anatomy. If you know about the cremasteric reflex, then it's clear that the genitofemoral nerve is involved in that. The cremasteric reflex is where um, the skin of the medial thigh, um, that is rubbed, and that causes the cremaster muscle on that side to contract. So the genitofemoral nerve might have a sensory role in that sometimes, but certainly it has a motor role in innervating the cremaster muscle. We saw how the genital branch passes through the inguinal canal. So with an inguinal hernia that will also be passing through the inguinal canal, um, with repair of that inguinal hernia, there's a risk that the genital part of that genitofemoral nerve could be damaged, right? Because it's right there. Um, now there's another nerve nearby as well, the ilioinguinal nerve. We have talked about it in the past. I don't know if I've done a separate video on it, but the ilioinguinal nerve or the genitofemoral nerve could be injured by surgery to the low anterior abdomen. And it's tricky to work out which nerve is causing the pain. Um, and often um, nerve blocks, so anaesthetic of individual nerves can help you work out which nerve has been damaged. The ilioinguinal nerve is two 
It's also carrying sensory innovation back from the anterior scrotum and from the medial thigh, right? So the sensory distribution is very, very similar. So it's difficult to work out whether the ilioinguinal nerve is causing the pain or the genitofemoral nerve is causing the pain. Likewise then, a lacerating injury to that inguinal region could also damage that nerve. Um, and as we've seen, the nerve is coming from the low back Injury to the low back, the lumbar vertebrae, in the typical manner, heavy lifting, uh, spinal fracture, uh, lumbar spinal surgery could also damage the genitofemoral nerve at, you know, near its roots of L1 and L2. So what does the pain feel like? Well, um, the pain is usually on one side because this is a peripheral nerve injury so it's usually only going to affect one side both peripheral nerves would have to be affected for pain to occur on both sides it does happen um, the pain is usually well it can be it's usually low in the abdomen it can be on the upper anterior thigh the proximal thigh it can be in the groin and we're thinking about um, the sensory information coming back. We're thinking about the, uh, a neuralgia forming. So there could be uh, pain, there could be a burning sensation, there could be altered sensation, there could be numbness. Pain is usually increased on palpation of the inguinal region of the lower abdomen, as you might expect, but also extension of the lower back might bring on the pain because you've seen how the nerve runs from the lower back and nerves are physical things and they take certain roots and they're not very stretchy so if you pull the nerve on the lower back it's going to pull on the nerve and if it's stuck somewhere then that's likely to trigger the pain so pain on back extension but again the ilioinguinal nerve comes from the same roots can cause you know there's an overlap between the genitofemoral nerve and the ilioinguinal nerve. But in terms of the genitofemoral nerve, we've seen that it comes from the L1 and L2 spinal nerve roots. It passes through psoas major, runs around, splits into two branches, genital and femoral. The femoral branch runs deep to the inguinal ligament to the anterior thigh, the upper anterior thigh, and the genital branch runs through the inguinal canal um, to innervate the skin of the scrotum and the chromaster muscle. All right, the genitofemoral nerve. Another important bit of little anatomy. <laughs> See you next week.